Maybe we can go region by region. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start with Europe, given that that is the one that we usually assume is going to be doing the best. Right. It is generally the region in the world where media freedom is the most protected. However, it is has experienced the most decline in its score due to its indicators. And this is because a journalist has been murdered in Malta, investigative journalist Daphne Caruana Galizia, uh, and the country fell 18 places on the index this year. Um, we're also seeing uh, a similar decline in Slovakia. Uh, a journalist was murdered uh, in 2018, uh, several months after Daphne Caruana was, Galizia was murdered, and the, they were both uh, covering uh, corruption as investigative reporters. But you also have countries like the United Kingdom, which you think would be a great actor, but ranks at number 40. Uh, and that's largely due to the adoption of the Investigatory Powers Act, which can severely limit reporters and whistleblowers' activities. I see. Um, what about in the Americas? Because that's also an area in which usually does fairly well on this ranking. So in Latin America, we have a trend of violence, uh, impunity for journalist murders, like for example in Mexico, where 11 journalists were killed in 2017, uh, making it the second deadliest country for uh, media workers uh, after Syria. Um, but you also have authoritarian policies, uh, like in Venezuela. And then you have a good actor, like Costa Rica, but even Costa Rica fell in the index this year due to harassment of journalists. And that's uh, been the unique trend this year that to have that switch happen? Yes. Um, looking further over, continuing on our global tour here, um, how about Africa? Talk to us a little bit about what's going on. So there. in Africa, the major concerns are widespread internet shutdowns uh, throughout the region in order to curb coverage of protests. This happens in places like Cameroon and the Democratic Republic of Congo. But also we have um, jail terms or police harassment of journalists who are trying to cover the fight against terrorism, um, specifically Boko Haram in Mali and Nigeria. And when you talk about um, the shutdowns of the internet, what, what are you referring to more specifically? So uh, I think it d goes to shutdown of cellular service, but also any kind of use of internet uh, social media apps on people's phones so that they can in get information about where a protest is occurring or have there been arrests, have there been violent assaults, have there been deaths at a protest, things that journalists should normally be able to cover freely. And that's something that we talk about, uh, uh, we have talked about when, in various coverage of what things are happening in the Middle East. That's so is correct. that a similar trend there? Or? We do see similar trends in the Middle East. However, uh, it does have the worst uh, performance uh, regionally in the index. Um, and we do see uh, repression of uh, journalism through the use of anti-terrorism or cybercrime legislation in places like Egypt, but also in the Gulf states. Um, but then, of course, you have deadly countries for reporting, like Syria and Yemen, countries in conflict, Syria being the deadliest country still for journalists uh, in 2017. Right, and that makes sense given the general situation of what's happening in Syria right now, that that would be reflected for the press as well. Um, it is... Uh, I feel like Asia is almost too big of a region to ask you to, to paint one trend, but, but um, tell me what, the, what is going on in that very large part of the world that right. stands out to you. If I could highlight one thing, it's the um, exportation of China's authoritarian model and control of information. Uh, China, as you know, is the biggest prison in the world for both professional and non-professional journalists. And two imprisoned bloggers, writers, died uh, in 2017 due to untreated cancer while they were in detention. Um, but you know, this model has been exported to places like Cambodia, places like Vietnam, where there's crackdown on independent bloggers. Uh, bloggers in Vietnam now could face 15-year jail sentences for simply trying to relay information to the public. Wow. Um, so we went on a little global tour there about all the different regions and the highlights of what's going on.